Hey everybody, Jonathan Baylor back with another SANE show. Very excited because we have a wonderful SANE show veteran with us today. She's been on the show twice. This is her third time and for good reason because she's always a bundle of joy with great insights. New York Times bestselling author and just awesome person extraordinaire, Lynn Janae Rositas. So welcome to the show. Always good to chat with you, friend. Always good to chat with you. Well, Lynn Janae, one of the reasons I was really excited to have you on the show today is I know you have some exciting stuff in the works around helping people to eat a more nutrient-dense lifestyle. But I wanted to laser focus on the number one challenge I hear people have when it comes to eating a more nutrient-dense lifestyle, and that is finding delicious, simple ways to eat vegetables. Boom! Has that been your experience? People struggle with that? Well, you know, it is, and it's certainly on the plan because uh, we've found so many vegetables that are commonly thought of as healthy and they're actually higher reactive. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, people start off with a really limited source of the same vegetables. So we're, we're approaching it from a two-pronged thing there. How do we make these least inflammatory vegetables taste good? How, how many times can you eat zucchini, darn it? And... Uh, <laughs> Also, how do you how do you incorporate even if you love vegetables? How do you get a wide array of vegetables uh, and make sure that they're working for you and make sure that they're good? And certainly, uh, eating seasonally really really helps. But I think what winds up happening is that people just think of steaming, sautéing, maybe roasting vegetables if they're super super great in the kitchen. But there's so many ways that you can quote unquote jazz up vegetables and make them friendly, not just for yourself, but for the whole family. And I know for a lot of people that actually take the time to cook at home, they feel like they're making many different meals for every single person in the family. So uh, what we've devised, and certainly in our new cookbook, which we're super excited about, is ways to make vegetables exciting and delicious. I know uh, in our last book, one of our, our favorite dishes, which everybody loved, was the timbal, Bill's timbal. And basically, it's because everything's really good with cheese. So if we could throw in the Swiss chard and the onions and the fennel and all of these things that people might not normally eat, but you layer it with a couple layers of cheese and maybe a little low inflammatory tomato sauce, and all of a sudden, it's a vegetable lasagna. Mm. Well, now you have six to seven vegetables in that meal, and you're scarfing it down. It's the same thing with, let's say, kale. A lot of people may not be so crazy about kale, but they know it's super nutrient-dense, and it's something that they should eat. And it's really exciting because sort of bigger stores like Costco are now carrying these foods, so they're a lot less expensive for folks. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you sprinkle a little panko crumbs on there, and once again, maybe you layer a little Parmesan cheese on there, and all of a sudden, it's like a creamed spinach. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's easy to eat, and the whole family loves it. So I think thinking outside of the box, thinking of sauces is always a great way to go. One of our favorite sauces is our spicy almond saute. Mm -hmm. And we do that because there are a lot of folks that have issues with peanut butter, you know, it's a goitrogen, and of course, there are people with peanut butter allergies. But all of a sudden, you get some almond butter and a little coconut milk, and maybe a little sriracha, and you will have people that have never eaten a vegetable downing those dishes. I think that's a brilliant suggestion, Lynn Janae, because so often some of these some of these filler foods, like let's think of maybe noodles or, or, or rice or starches, they're really just a delivery vehicle for sauce. I can't remember too many people that go to a, just a delicious Asian restaurant and say, man, the reason that was my favorite Asian restaurant was because of the rice. It is the best rice I've ever had. It's usually rice is just a great way to get some additional sauce. So I love this paradigm of stop thinking about just willing yourself to like the taste of raw plain vegetables, but rather, how can you find some delicious sauces where uh, uh, the sauce is so delicious that the vegetable itself is almost irrelevant. It's just along for the ride almost. You know, it's funny you say that. There's a, a famous quote, I don't know if I made it in the last book, but one woman said about her spicy cocoa sauce, which is based on, on a Thai sauce. She said, I would eat kitty litter with this <laughs> sauce. So you're definitely right that. Uh, the sauce can be the vehicle. Um, we found that for a lot of people, and especially for kids, or for those of us with a kid's palate, <laughs> that uh, if we came up with a healthy uh, ranch dressing, people would eat the vegetables. So we did that, and we used coconut milk as the base. And once again, I mean, that's an amazing way 
to to spice up and to dollop your vegetables. Doing something like grilling, you know, if you've been indoors all winter and you're sauteing and you're steaming, get out and grill those vegetables. It has a totally different texture and flavor profile, which is amazing. But it's really about uh, if you don't like spicy food, I don't want you to eat spicy food. If you prefer food with more of Italian flavors or Greek flavors or Mexican flavors, go ahead and explore that. Mm -hmm. You like curry, throw curry on everything. Do what you can to make it exciting because literally either using the spices that you love or trying a new few new spices can make vegetables taste exciting, delicious, and different. Lynn Janae, this is a this is a gold mine, and I, I can see I can see one potential pothole on this road to eating vegetables, and that would people uh, would be people listening to what we're saying here, watching us, and saying, "Oh, okay, vegetables with a sauce on top." Well, I, I know about that, so I'm going to go get some hydrogenated soybean oil dressing from the store because that's a sauce, and in fact, it says low calorie on the bottle, and it it says things like. Uh, inspired by natural sources. So so what are some sauces we should watch out for? Well, basically everything you mentioned, and certainly <laughs> if you can't pronounce, uh, and we say this in the first book, if you can't pronounce the ingredients, please don't eat it. You know, you can make really delicious sauces out of the most simple things. A simple balsamic vinegar and olive oil and throwing in some fresh herbs is the most tasty. And not only that, it's the most economical and health-giving way to prepare a salad dressing. So you don't need to go out and buy these manufactured uh, items that have so many preservatives and who knows what else in it that's not working for your chemistry. Doing something as simple as just putting a little butter in dill mm -hmm. or uh, some fresh ground black pepper or getting a, a little bit jazzier and taking that coconut milk and grating some fresh ginger in there. Mm. All of these things, all of these parts of the produce aisle that you're walking by. But, you know, more than that, I want you to think, when you go out to eat, what is it that you love? Mm -hmm. What types of foods do you go for? Do you go for Mexican? Do you go for Indian? Do you go for New American? Do you go for Italian? You can easily replicate those recipes at home. And the great thing is, is that the internet is just a wonderful, wonderful resource. So you can easily tap in sauces. And I, I tell you, I love to eat and I love to cook, but I am the queen of the of the quick cook. <laughs> and if it takes more than 10 minutes, it's not part of my routine because I don't have much time. And you can literally, I think this is what holds so many people back. You can literally make these sausage in three to four to five minutes and they're gonna last for a week. Mm -hmm. And they're going to make you and your food seem exciting. One of the favorite sauces that people loved from my last book was our spicy apricot sauce. Mm. And literally all it was with ap was apricot jam, water, and sriracha. Mm. And people are serving this at dinner parties and people are getting chicken and over vegetables and people are like, this is amazing. Where did you get this sauce? And of course, you know, they're laughing in their sleeves saying, well, you know, it's my, my secret recipe. And it, it literally takes not even a minute to make. So. Think about what you love and think how, about how you can expand upon it. But what I want you to know is beyond the obvious, oh, I'm eating more vegetables and this is really great, is that so many of these herbs have really wonderful health benefits. We're talking antibacterial, antimicrobial, uh, you know, antifungal. These things are amazing. One of my favorite recipes, and it's in the new cookbook, is for a vinaigrette. And for a lot of folks, having vinegar can actually kick up yeast. So I was thinking about it and I was saying, why don't I just take some yeast fighting herbs and make a vinaigrette? And that's how our Greek vinaigrette was born. And it's just oregano, thyme, and garlic. Hmm. And it tastes amazing. So you can actually take these health benefits, start doing the research. It's really exciting how everything you can put in your mouth can heal you and make those vegetables a lot more fun. And it's a, it's a really empowering paradigm shift, Lynn Janae, because for almost all other foods, if, if, we, if, if the food had to stand on its own, if we just said, look, all you're allowed to eat is, is white rice with nothing on it, just, just white rice, most people would not find it hard to just give up plain white rice because it in and of itself, or even a, a chicken breast, if you've never eaten a plain chicken breast, 
it's quite disgusting. <laughs> so, but, but I think people's, maybe they conflate fruits and vegetables because we're always told about eat more fruits and vegetables, eat more fruits and vegetables as if it's one food group. And we think that since you generally don't put anything on fruits, well, the only way you can eat vegetables is just like you would eat fruits, which is just plain and by themselves. But this is a, this is a whole paradigm shift. It's just like, just like every other food that you either add spices or sauces to because by itself it's not very tasty, why not give vegetables the same treatment? It's so true. I mean, you can do everything from flavored oils. You can even flavor your goat cheese. One of, you know, we, we started a food portion uh, of our business called LG Kitchen. And our favorite sauces that, that people just adore are clan Caesar salad. And we have a dairy-free version of that. We have a, a lemon sunflower pesto that's made with sunflower seeds. Uh, we make tahini from sunflower seeds because sesame is so reactive. Uh, there are just a million sauces that you can play and you can riff off of that are super inexpensive. And once again, the health benefits are absolutely amazing. And when uh, I'm actually working with a gentleman right now, and I mentioned zucchini pasta, and he's like, zucchini scares me. <laughs> he's like, well, Ingenie, I, I, I'll, I'll put it in your soups, and it's not so scary. So I showed him a picture of zucchini pasta bolognese with a nice low reactive tomato sauce and some meatballs. Well, guess who's having zucchini pasta tonight? So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lynn I love this. And I want to just double caution our listeners because I think we've got this wonderful tool here we've talked about. We've talked about sauces and seasonings. And I, I just want to urge people to not hear, uh, you know, any go to the, your store and just buy some sauce and put it on your vegetables. Because as brilliant as and simple as these homemade sauces are that we're describing, I don't know if I've ever seen anything that is more ubiquitously bad for you than the sauces you can buy commercially. I mean, just, just like general rule of thumb, if it's sold at a grocery store and it's a sauce, it's, it's a landmine. I mean, would you say that's an over-exaggeration? Unfortunately, it's true. Even if we're just talking about the sodium content, I mean, it's frightening. You know, uh, one of the ways that we're making our, our low reactive tomato sauce, and this is a secret, so your <laughs> folks are gonna be in on it. <laughs> You know, when we originally did some testing and we found that tomato sauce uh, was anywhere from 70 to 85 percent reactive, part of it was because of the citric acid and part of it was because it was just so high in sodium. Mm. So you could easily have 600 milligrams of sodium in these plain tomato sauces. We found that simply by going for a bottled tomato sauce, which generally does not have citric acid, and looking for lower sodium content, well, already that, that small shift is a much cleaner product. Mm. Now, here's a secret. If you mix half of our carrot ginger soup with half of that tomato sauce, the citric acid and low sodium, what you're doing is you're sneaking in more vegetables because it's gonna have zucchini and carrots and onions and all that. It's not going to alter the flavor. It's going to lower the acidity and it's gonna taste just like tomato sauce. Mm. So this is one of our, our favorite sauces. and really in the cookbook we do go through sauces and herbs a lot because it's actually how i really got started on the path to health at the age of 18 i started studying herbology mm. when i started studying what these simple herbs that you can grow in your windowsill or grow in the garden with your kids can do for your health it's absolutely amazing and it's fascinating it's also a great way to get kids that aren't eating their vegetables and aren't as excited. This is a great way to get them interested in, in uh, eating more vegetables. You know, my, my son, when he was one, he started watering basil with me. And then he started picking the basil for daddy. And then by the time he was three, we told him everything was basil that was green. So we were chopping up kale and Swiss chocolate <laughs> on his food. And he's like, this doesn't smell like basil. I'm like, it's basil, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it worked like a charm. And it's a great way to expand your palate, certainly. Lynn Janae, I think that is, is, is very, very, very helpful. And I think the one other roadblock I want to help our listeners avoid as they go down this path to sanity and increased vegetable intake is you mentioned that some of the simplest sauces involve things that have fat and calories in them coconut milk, butter, things like that, cheese in some instances. How do you help people wrap their head around eating those things? 
Well, you and I both know that calories mean nothing, and that's one <laughs> of the reasons why I love you. Um, calories really do mean nothing, and especially as we age. So what we need to know is as long as a food works for our chemistry, it's going to benefit our health. It's only foods that don't work for your body, and we discuss this quite quite a bit on the plan. Those are the foods that are going to cause weight gain. Mm -hmm. So unless you're reactive or inflammatory or have an allergy or food sensitivity to butter, you are not going to raise your cholesterol. In fact, you're going to get the many health benefits of butter, like selenium and vitamin E, which is actually essential for heart health. So you're, you're nourishing your thyroid, you're nourishing your heart. It's got vitamin A, and it tastes really darn good. So if it's getting you to eat more vegetables and you're helping your thyroid and you're aiding your heart health, well, why wouldn't you have some butter? Coconut, another great example. I mean, it's rich in wonderful fats, Fat is really essential for brain function. It's essential for maintaining cell integrity because our cells have a phospholipid barrier. We need fats. This is wonderful. But the great thing about fats is that fats keep you full and they keep you satiated. So now you're not reaching for that extra third and fourth snack because you feel full, you're loving the food, and you're benefiting your body. And it tastes good. So what's not to love? I would beautifully, beautifully summarize. So you've mentioned that you've got this new cookbook coming out. You go into more detail of what we've talked about here. Tell us a little bit about what you got coming up next and where we can get more uh, wonderful sauces and seasonings like we've talked about here today. Well, I'm really excited about the cookbook because when we came out the plan, with the plan, everybody was really excited, but there were only a number of, of recipes in the cookbook, so I kept hearing from people, Lynn, can you, can you make more recipes, can you make more recipes, and can you make Mexican food, and Thai food, and Indian food? So I really set to reinterpret a lot of dishes and make them low inflammatory. And the exciting thing about the cookbook is it contains all of the least inflammatory foods based on my research. And it's also all the foods that help to nourish thyroid health because we're kind of nuts about the thyroid at the plan. And, uh, and the foods are delicious and they're quick and they're easy and they're inexpensive to make. Because like I said, I would love to have a time to massage a chicken under a full moon. <laughs> like a lot of people, I'm really busy. So you know, in a lot of these recipes, they'll be like, oh, put the dry ingredients here and the wet ingredients here and you know, introduce them to each other. Like throw everything in a food processor, preheat the oven, put it in the oven, you're done. So it's great for people that are super, super busy. But the great thing also about the plan is because we use so many of the same ingredients and reinterpret them, it's actually going to help to lower your food cost. Mm. And we really go into the benefits of each of the foods and how they can affect your health in a positive way. Mm. And that's what we want. We want food to be delicious, fun, inexpensive, and easy to make. I'm very, very excited to check this out, Lynn Janae, because I know that so many people have success when they can stop thinking in terms of deprivation and can start thinking in terms of substitution. And I feel like that's what you've, you've outlined in your cookbook is take these dishes. I mean, it's, it's not about never eating X again. It's just about eating the smarter, anti-inflammatory, more nutrient-dense version of X moving forward. So that's, that's incredibly exciting. Where can we go to learn more about you and about the cookbook? Well, you just, when you brought that up, of course, it made me think of our recipe for red velvet cupcakes. Nice. Which is awesome, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and super protein rich. It's protein rich enough that you could have it for breakfast. But uh, the book's going to be sold everywhere. I, I don't know if you folks know, we're uh, having a hard time with Amazon, my, my uh, publishing company, but certainly Barnes and Nobles, many small retailers definitely support them because we're all about the small businesses. But starting December 30th, the cookbook's going to be out everywhere. And uh, if you follow us on Facebook, we have some exciting things that we're going to be doing for people that pre-order, and it involves a certain someone that I know. <laughs> so um, if you want to follow us on Facebook, please look for the Lynn A plan. And starting Thanksgiving, we're going to have a bunch of exciting offers for people that pre-order the cookbook. Boom! I love it. Well, Lynn Janae, this is, this is perfect timing, and it's always a wonderful experience every time we chat. And I'm inspired to go whip up some simple sauces here for the lunch that I'm going to have right after our conversation. So thank you so much for joining us today.
My pleasure. Have a great day. Listeners and viewers, I hope you enjoyed this wonderful chat as much as I did. Again, our guest today is the wonderful, as always, Lynn Janae Rositas. And you have to say her last name like that because it's fun. She's got a new cookbook coming out, so be sure to check it out. And remember, stay sane.